continuing story of Peyton Place. Starring Dorothy Malone as Constance McKenzie, Ed Nelson as Michael Rossi, Mia Farrow as Allison McKenzie, Ryan O'Neill as Rodney Harrington, Barbara Parkins as Betty Anderson, Tim O'Connor as Elliot Carson, Christopher Conley as Norman Harrington. Two days ago, Brian Colby died in a Boston hospital. But his burial today will be in Peyton Place. Anne and Stephen Cord must pick up Dr. Michael Rossi. They are the only mourners. The choice of Colby's final resting place was made by his daughter Anne. For Martin Peyton and Hannah Cord, Anne's decision is a warning that even from the grave, Brian Colby may still reach out to destroy them. It's just a postponement, Martin, not a reprieve. I told you, when I called the hospital, Stephen answered the phone from Brian's room. That proves nothing. Then why is Brian being buried here, unless he wanted it? Just like Brian had suggested. He always had a warped sense of humor. He shot the remains buried near my daughter Catherine, making a coarse joke of eternity. Well, if I thought he'd stopped at asking to be buried here without telling why, I'd laugh, too. You'd laugh? Brian's shoddy remains. Is he any worse than your daughter? A murderess? They must have a lot to catch up on, those two. You never stopped hating her. I've hated both of them, with good reason. What did they leave me? I do believe you're still jealous, Anna. Tell me, which one of them did you hate the most? You ought to be able to answer that one for yourself, Martin. Which one gave me the most cause to hate? A greedy, selfish little girl who couldn't keep her hands off anything she wanted. That's enough. No, Martin, no. It's not nearly enough. Not for all the years I had to pay for her mistakes. And you were well paid. It's a little late to start crying over your loss. As I recall, at the time, you were glad to be rid of him. After all, you got his son in exchange. Yes. I got Brian's son. When he was a baby, I used to stand over his crib telling myself that. Hating him, wishing he'd never been born. But over the years, he stopped being Brian's son and became mine. He is my son, Martin. And if I lose Stephen, what do I have left? What you've always had, a job taking care of a dying old man. I'm a long way from dead, Anna. And what will you have to live for? Your precious Rodney. Well, Martin, if Rodney finds out the truth, he's going to despise you, and you'll lose him just as I'll lose Stephen. Then our interests are the same. Not quite. Because whatever Rodney finds out, he's still your heir. Your legitimate heir. And Stephen will have nothing left, not even the crumb of hoping someday you might acknowledge him. Ah, that's conjecture. Brian Colby may have died before they got there. If it wasn't Brian's idea to be buried here, then whose was it? And why? Don't be tempted, Anna. Keep away from that cemetery. Unless you want the truth to come out right now. Are you ready to face Anne and Stephen there? A family reunion over your husband's grave? Be careful, the floor is slippery. I'm trying to cut some of this grease with kerosene. Can you talk for a minute? Uh, yeah. Oh, can we talk in there? Okay. Betty, you and I have... We have got to stop these little talks. There's nothing wrong with my being here. Nothing you can't tell your husband, for his own good. But you can't tell him, can you? Did 
Did you know that uh, Anne Howard's father was an artist? No, I didn't. Well, when Stephen and Anne came back from Boston, they, they brought her father's suitcase with them. And they, were, they found some, some old charcoal sketches of, of your mother in it. My mother? Well, her portrait, the one that was slashed. Well, are you sure? I'm... Well, it was your mother's face in the same pose. Well, that means that Anne's father was, was the artist who painted my mother's portrait. Anne Stevens' father. You know, your grandfather must have known he painted it. He must have known Brian Colby. And if he did? Well, if he did, then why have he and Mrs. Cord denied it? They flatly denied it. Why are you so sure they're out to hurt somebody? Has it ever occurred to you that possibly they're, they're trying to protect someone? Is that why he's hiding in the hospital? What do you mean, hiding? His so-called setback. He's an old man, Betty. And old men do have setbacks. Well, Dr. Rossi's been so pleased with your grandfather's progress that he's cut down on the medication. Hey, remember me? I carry the medicine tray. Well, why is it every time that I suggest that your grandfather or your father might be up to no good, you put on the blinders? Hey, I'll tell you something. You're here to help Stephen, not, not to educate me. Don't forget that, okay? All right. You know, for all I care, you can, you can send your grandfather a get well card. Betty. Okay. Okay, I'll, I'll go see him. I'll, I'll find out how he feels. Oh, I'm sorry to interrupt. You, uh, you see, we, we keep these things in here. There's not very much storage space in this joint. Lee, I thought that you were working on uh, Stacy's pickup. Well, I am. Well, I didn't know it had a broken fan, though. Well, you see, you don't keep up with things. It is Mrs. Cord, isn't it? Uh, yes. Well, I didn't know you were a customer here. It's nice to see you. Goodbye, Rod. Goodbye. <laughs> I think I found a couple of things. Mr. Payton reads so much, I'm never sure whether or not he's read what I'm buying. I think I'd better try to pick out a couple more. Fine, I'll take these to scatter for you. Oh, thank you. Mother? Mm-hmm? What's it like to have somebody close to you die? You think of Ann Howard? Hmm. Maybe I should have gone to her father's funeral. She must be terribly lonely. She hasn't got many friends here, and Mr. Colby was the only family she had. Dr. Rossi will be with her. I was just thinking, if my father had died a little while ago, or if any of us had died while we were all so split apart, the ones that were left would have had such bitter memories. I think I could take being alone, but not those kind of memories. Excuse me, but I... I... I don't seem to find anything else. Uh, how much do they come to? Let's see, that comes to 6.42. Thank you. Just charge it, please. Oh, Miss Cormac. Your book. Thank you. You're welcome. Mrs. Cord seems so distracted. She's usually such an iceberg. And Mr. Payton's just checked into the hospital again. Oh, really? What's the matter with him? Mrs. Cord said they don't seem to know. Maybe that's why she's upset.
Mrs. Cohen, are you all right? Oh, yes, I'm fine, thank you. Are you sure? I could get you something, water or something. No, I'm perfectly all right, really. I... Weddings and funerals always make me emotional. Rather stupidly emotional. Even when the people involved are perfect strangers. Goodbye. Conscience. You know, I learned bad tricks when this was a chandlery. This is my idea of how to keep stock. Ain't it terrible? Talk to me. What is it? And a, a hearse just passed by. And Howard's father. I know. I ducked it. I mean, I really ducked it. I got thinking and brooding, and I just had to think up something to do. Any old thing to keep busy. Just as the car passed, I... I felt the baby kick. That's life and death. Right, you know how much I want this baby. I can guess. For Elliot, for me. Well, hey, how about me? Oh, you too. I want it more than anything else in the world. Sure you do. But I don't want it to grow up with black limousines rolling by. Constance, dying's a part of living. Your son's gonna have to learn that. You and Elliot aren't going to be around forever. Neither am I. It's funny. What? The baby just kicked again. He heard us. And he's protesting. <laughs> right. Tell me something. What? Something I've never been able to understand. What is it? Why you make so much sense. Constance, don't you know my secret? Hmm. Well, you see, I pretend that I'm saying something very deep and profound. But actually, I'm listening to the other fella, because he might be saying something that's really deep and profound and might not know he's saying it. <laughs> listening, that's my secret. <laughs> Thanks, Eva. <laughs> you take good care of my grandson. Mm -hmm. Bye. Bye, Constance. 